Okay, so the first thing we want to look at is we want to write triangle. And this is going to kind of review our trigonometry here. So if I have an angle here, this will be the opposite side, this will be the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. And we're gonna use this right triangle a lot. So if I have a tree, and the sun is coming through here, we're gonna use the old elementary school sun, and it now casts a shadow, and we can measure the shadow. And we're gonna say that that shadow is three meters long. So this is more of a bush than a tree. And we can take our phone and we can, or we can take a protractor. And I'm gonna make this a three here. And we can measure this angle and we can say that this angle is 16 degrees. We want to know how tall is our tree? How tall is the tree? Well, if I go back here, I can look at my sine of my angle is going to equal the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine of my angle is going to equal the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of the angle is going to equal the opposite over adjacent. So to find the height of the tree, I'm gonna look at the tangent of my angle is gonna equal the height of the tree divided by the shadow. I wanna solve the shadow. I, I know what my shadow is. I know what my angle is. So this is gonna be three times the tangent of my angle. In this case, it was 16 degrees. And that's gonna give me my height of my tree. So I'll plug that into the calculator. I like to do my tangent first. And then I wanna show you guys, you see right here in the bottom, I think I had a couple of people that didn't verify that their calculators were in degrees versus radians versus gradients. So here on my calculator, this is the degree. If I change it, that's now, I can now call up the radians or gradients, but I wanna be in degrees because that's the data that I have. So I'm gonna hit my enter. So I'm gonna put my tangent of 16 degrees and it'll give me a ratio because that's what tangent, sine and cosine are, or ratios. And that gives me that and I'm gonna multiply that by three and it now says that the height of my tree was 8.860 meters. So we can use our trigonometry to actually calculate the height of something. Well, now let's take the mountain. So I got my mountain here and we're starting out with a person and the person takes a a picture of this. Now, we don't know how far away we are from our mountain, but I could still estimate a right triangle. But we measure this angle, and that angle, let's say, happens to be 26 degrees. Our person walks a known distance. And this known distance here, we're gonna say is two kilometers. Then we take another reading. And we get a new angle and let's say that this angle is 30 degrees. Now, what we don't know this whole time is this distance but we can call that distance D. So let's look at our two triangles here.
I'm going to use my same tangent, but this time I'm going to use the tangent of 26 degrees is equal to, and this is the height of my mountain, is equal to the height of the mountain divided by D. That's this outside triangle, exactly what I just did. Now I can do the tangent of 30 degrees is equal to the height of my mountain. But now this side here, this part right here is D minus two. So I'll put that in here as D minus two. This is equation one, this is equation two, and now I have two equations, two unknowns. H is what I'm trying to find. So I'm gonna solve for D. So I'm gonna have D tangent 26 degrees is equal to H, or I get D is equal to H divided by tangent of 26 degrees. And then I can plug it into there and ultimately solve for H and be able to determine the height of the mountain. So I think I had that one set up for you guys to work and play with, but that really is probably the most common difficult homework problem just because people haven't been utilizing two equations, two unknowns in a while. But let's go back to our triangle here. Now, I purposely drew my triangle a little bit differently because we're going to play with this triangle a lot. Here's my angle. Here's my hypotenuse. Here's my adjacent. And here is the opposite. So we play with this triangle quite a bit because if I have a vector, so here's my vector and I'm gonna give myself a coordinate system. This vector is just pointing to a position, all right? This vector is just pointing to a position. So I'm gonna actually write this vector in a different kind of notation. So this is my x-axis. So we're gonna use a little i here. And I'm gonna use a little green piece here. And i and j are called unit vectors. They have a magnitude of one and I is in the direction of X and J is in the direction of Y. And if I'm in three dimensions, I get a K and that one is in the direction of Z. So if I have this vector and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna mark off my graph paper here. We're gonna use my graph paper. Okay, so this is one, two, three, four, five. So if I'm writing in my Cartesian coordinate situation, this is the X is located at 4.5 and my Y is located at minus three. So I can write this as a point in my Cartesian coordinate system.
And that's gonna represent that vector. Well, let's look at it a couple other ways. I can use vector notation And this could be, so we're gonna give this vector a name. We're gonna call it vector A. I can write vector A as 4.5i minus 3j. And that represents the two components of this vector. I've got my component here and I've got my component there. And I can draw this vector by writing it this way. I can determine the magnitude of A, and this is how we say this, this is the magnitude. My magnitude of A is all of a sudden, if I'm looking at this, I have a right triangle. I know the sides of my right triangle. So I can use my a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. And so this would be my 4.5 squared plus my negative three squared is gonna equal the magnitude of a squared. So I can plug that into my calculator at 4.5 squared plus three squared. So I get 29.29 is equal to the magnitude of A squared. But if I want just the magnitude of A, I gotta take the square root and this is 5.4. Now, the reason we just have a number here is we don't we haven't said whether this is meters, we haven't said whether that's kilometers, we haven't said anything. But I could give you a vector. So let's look at another vector here. I could give you, here's my Cartesian coordinate system. I could give you a vector that looks like this. And I can tell you that this is six units long. And I can give you this angle and I can say that that angle is 110 degrees. And we could write out its components. So what we know that that's gonna be, if that's 110 degrees, this is gonna be 70 degrees. And now I can get my two sides of my vector here because I can go back and use my equation. So this side is going to be, we know that the magnitude is six, so it's going to be six sine 70 degrees. And this side will be six cosine 70 degrees. So we can go ahead and calculate that out. This side is going to equal 5.6. This side is going to equal 2.1. But if I want to write this in vector notation, we're going to call this vector C. C could be written out as where a negative 2.1 in the I because it's going this direction, it's in this quadrant. And then we have a positive 5.6J. And so I have it in that notation. And we know I can do it in my point notation because we can do that because that's something we've seen before. So we're going to be using this right triangle quite a bit as we move through things and we get our vector notation. And on Wednesday, when we get back together, we'll be using more of that vector notation, but I kind of wanted to introduce that to you as you guys 
start working your homework to get your extra credit, you'll start to be able to see some of that notation where we're adding vectors together. Okay, any questions on that material before I dive into something else? All right, I'm gonna, there's my, there we go. 